Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another short little unboxing to share with you guys. I have no idea what's in here, but I'm almost certain it was sent uh, as a response to my recent community post about knives that I'm looking for for review. Please check out my community tab. There's a whole bunch of stuff I'm still looking for. Uh, go to the community tab on my main YouTube channel page. Scroll uh, down a uh, few posts back. It's a big orange and black uh, post that says Knives Wanted for October. I know we're in November now, but Knives Wanted for October. It's got a whole list there. And I'm also looking for knives uh, that are not on the list. So if you've got something you want me to check out, yes, I will send your knives back. Please check out that post. Uh, thank you so much to Chris for sending this in. Uh, for me to take a look at. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's find out what's in here. Pretty light box. Um, I always have a full conversation with people before they send me stuff. It's not like they send me things blind. It's just there's so much coming in that it's, you know, kind of hard to remember. Um, okay, we have a little package right here. And then we have a note, which is wonderful. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, hello, Metal Complex. Here is my... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've actually been trying to get this for a while. Uh, feel free to carry it and disassemble. Love the content on the channel. Keep uh, keep up the great work. Thank you very much. This is a perfect note. And then he has his Instagram right here. Be sure to follow uh, Coffee Herbert on Instagram uh, because it's people like him that, you know, make it uh, possible for me to share this type of stuff with you guys daily. Um, yeah, so this... Is the Spiderco Patades? Patadisi? Patades? Oh, okay. All right. Um, the liner is in a really the the lock disengagement is in a really interesting place. So this is uh, this should be available. I think. I don't know. I I will link this and Spiderco knives right down in the description so you guys can check. Excuse me. Check this out for yourself. This is not a review. It's the first time I've ever handled it. I like to go in blind because it's a little, it's more fun for me and it's more fun for the people watching. The full comprehensive review will come down the road in a few weeks. We have M390, which is for a, a production Spider Co. is not something that I expected to see. Is this um, a Taiwan, a tai oh no, this is Menagio. Min Maniago, I said Menagio. <laughs> like, the, that's the country where Nicki Minaj is from. <laughs> <laughs> Maniago, Maniago, Italy. Uh, so M390. Um, interesting. Look at the curvature here on the on the blade. Wow, that's wild. I'm gonna guess that's a needle-like tip. Uh yeah, I mean it's not the craziest, but I mean it's definitely a pointy tip for sure. Ergonomics are super weird. Um, not uncomfortable, but not comfortable either. This is a weird. Very strange knife. So, okay, so there's engagements. This is bizarre to me that it's, I cannot get it to want to fall. I'm almost certain it's running on phosphor bronze. Yeah, yeah, I'm still, my allergies, so I still, in my mind, I'm Carson from Downton Abbey. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, we have three allergy seasons here in Kansas, and once I got to be about 30, you know, apparently that's like, <laughs> you have allergies now, right? So, yeah, it's just, the congestion is just killing me. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, we have uh, some decent sized, fat. well, no, this looks like T6. This is T8, T8. We have a nice wire clip, and it looks like it is um, mountable for left-handed carry, so that's nice. A little off-centered here, a little bit. I imagine I can manipulate the um, screws here and get it back to normal. I mean, you know, it's not a bad spot, but this just isn't a knife that you're gonna like do this with, you know? The other thing that bothers me is it's a spider coat. Like, I mean, you can easily flick it out. You can easily just open it like this. I want to be able to reverse flick it. And because they didn't carve this side out like they did the front, you have no access back there, right? You can you can just barely spidey drop it, right? Does that matter? No. 
I've just gotten so used to, like with my Para 3 and my PM2, I've gotten so used to reverse flicking. It's actually, that's the primary way that I deploy it. A lot of people say, well, you're just being, you're just being fancy for the sake of being fancy. <sighs> no, I'm not. That's just how I got used to it. It's like, listen, the first time thumb studs ever became a thing on a knife, right? We don't consider that like a, some sort of magical wizard deployment system. But at some, it, at some point in time, that was. You had a nail nick, or I would imagine, at, you know, for a while, nothing. And then at some point, thumb studs came along and everyone's like, oh, those so people get fancy with their knives. Let's get all fancy with them. Now it's like, no, that's just a convenient way to deploy your knife, right? So, you know, people make that argument about front flippers and like unconventional means of deployment, right? And I would say the reverse flick, while it's been around for a long time, uh, people consider it more of a show off sort of fancy way to open your knife. But listen, for people who carry the, the PM2 and Para 3 and other Spyderco knives that have, you know, rear access to that hole, giggity, um, you probably do you know, use the reverse flick without even thinking about it. To me, it's actually easier to reverse flick the PM, the, the pair of three than to use the thumb hole. And that's adaption over time. So, you know, I think people who say that are just people who don't, have not adapted to that process or have not, you know, don't have a knife that, you know, allows them to do that. So they don't, there's no means of getting from a perspective of it just being a fancy show-offy way to deploy your knife to, no, it's actually more convenient. So when I pick up spider codes that do not have this rear access, <laughs> um, it kind of bothers me is what I'm saying. But the patades, patades uh, is still definitely interesting. And it's one of the only spider codes. There's actually lots of spider codes I haven't reviewed. It's one of the more interesting spider codes that I have not reviewed yet, even though it came out a while back. So this will be fun to take a look at for sure. Um, yeah, okay, I think that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Like I said, I'll link this guy right down in the description. I'm, I'm really, it's a nice surprise that that is M390. I thought for sure it was just going to be like S30V or maybe CTS XHP, which I would have been fine with XHP. Um, but, uh, no, that's cool. And this is a Sal Glesser design, really. It's, that, that is, that, that just, that surprises me. Okay, very cool, guys. Uh, that's going to be pretty much it for today. Like I said, please check out that community post. Definitely lots of stuff I'm still looking for. And that's how I generate the content on this channel. So thank you so much to the people who have sent this stuff in. Thanks again to Chris for sending this one in. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.